Hi, this is Mark with QuicksVenture.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at the latest release of RASBMC, release candidate number three, which uses the Frodo version of XBMC on your Raspberry Pi mini Linux computer. My Raspberry Pi is over here in its custom case, as you can obviously see. All I have attached to it is an Ethernet cable, power from a USB hub, and an IR receiver. It's an old Microsoft uh, Media Center IR receiver, and I'm using the matching Microsoft remote. I have uh, already installed XBM, or RASBMC on an SD card using the installer at rasbmc.com, part of STM Labs. And all I've done so far is power it up, let it restart so that XBMC is installed, and I've gone ahead and added two sources, one for movies and one for TV shows, with just a couple of sample files so you can see what performance looks like on the new release candidate number three. My initial impression is that the uh, operating system and XBMC are much smoother now than they were when I first tried this out a few months ago. Before, it was very difficult to navigate uh, even on the, the basic menus as things would uh, move very slowly and were uh, not always picking up uh, button presses or keystrokes. Part of that may have been power supply problems, but uh, a big part also is just general stability in the Raspbian uh, Debian distribution that RaspBMC is based on. So here's a quick look at what you can expect if you are going to use uh, RaspBMC on your Raspberry Pi. I'll quickly go into my Movies folder, and you can see that uh, fan art and banners show up very quickly. I have a small collection of movies here to show off a couple of different formats. Uh, starting with something very simple, this is a, an old movie, it's an old uh, rip of a DVD in XVID, so it's a very small file, and it will start up pretty quickly. This is an AVI file in XVID compression with MP3 audio. And you can see the video is full screen, relatively smooth, no stuttering, no buffering, and we can uh, seek ahead just fine, again with no buffering. It's not instantaneous like it would be on an Apple TV, but it's pretty good. Another example of uh, an XVID video, I have Gladiator. It's a much higher uh, resolution, so it's encoded. It's a much bigger file. It's about twice, three times the size. Again, it starts up just fine. No stuttering, nice, crisp, clean video. Jumping ahead, again, no uh, buffering or any problems like that. You also don't have any of the train wreck effects that you did on some of the Crystal HD based uh, decoders. It's a very uh, clean forward and back skipping. So we'll stop this and I'm going to load up a much larger file. This is uh, about a 6 gig uh, Blu-ray rip that I did, and it is, it's 720 resolution. The file size is about 5 gigabytes. So it's a pretty high bit rate HD file. And again, it starts up. There's no buffering, no stuttering. And I'll skip. Seeking ahead 30 seconds takes a little bit longer, but still no uh, buffering, no stuttering, and no train wreck effect. And finally, uh, this is a 4 gig AVI rip of a uh, Blu-ray edition of Transformers. So this is a very high bit rate XVID encode. And again, it starts right up. There is no uh, buffering and no stuttering. So that should give you an idea of what you can expect, at least with 720p uh, files. I do have some uh, 1080 files, but uh, I don't usually use them, and they should work just the same. Although my experience with larger files is that you can run into some buffering. Uh, the higher the bit rate, the uh, harder it is to skip ahead and move around. But looking at uh, browsing files again, the fan art is very quick to uh, load up. 
And moving on to TV shows, just a couple of sample uh, folders here, some old sci-fi. Banners come up really fast, and uh, even browsing for individual videos, the uh, individual episode information comes up fast as well. Overall, it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good experience. Much, much better than it was a few months ago. It's still certainly not as good as you would get from a uh, Apple TV or a dedicated home theater PC, but uh, it's come an awfully long way. So I'll show you just very quickly the other options that uh, are available in RC3. The big piece is the uh, RASBMC settings that is built right into XBMC as part of the build. And it offers you some uh, nice configuration options. Uh, the first option is network configuration, which will actually allow you to simply attach a USB Wi-Fi adapter. And I do have uh, one of those that I will show in another video. I've got a D-Link uh, 5 gigahertz wireless N adapter that I will plug in and show how to use. But basically, you plug it in, you will set the uh, SSID, you have to do that manually, it won't browse for you. And then you type in the Wi-Fi password. Uh, select update now, OK, and then it will uh, enable the wireless network. You have to unplug the wired network for the wireless network to take effect, but it's pretty clean. Uh, other options in settings, sorry, I went ahead and exited. You can select a, an XBMC nightly build and switch between versions or run a factory reset, which will erase all the settings in XBMC. Very useful stuff. Under system configuration, you can change the uh, Raspberry Pi password. You can uh, toggle on or off the uh, update mechanism, so when you reboot RASPMC, it automatically updates. Uh, it's a nice option, but if you want to turn it off, you can. There's a uh, UI resolution limit that uh, is better explained in the FAQ, but basically uh, RASPMC does some uh, unique things with how it uh, renders the screen. You can enable or disable audio engine. Uh, your mileage may vary, I'm just leaving it off. If you have the MPEG-2 license or the VC-1 license, you can enable them here, which will allow you to play uh, MPEG-2 files, which is actually a really nice feature. If you have some uh, MPEG-2 files, you can get full 1080p uh, uncompressed, well, <laughs> virtually uncompressed uh, video, which is really nice. Disable overscan and you can set the system performance profile. I always set mine to fast. Uh, that is overclocked but not overvolted. You can then go into advanced overclocking where you can get uh, much more granular. And there are additional uh, settings such as FTP and Samba, uh, enable or disable, remote control, cron job scheduler, TV head end, good stuff. And finally, there is the IR remote. Uh, by default, the IR remote is all enabled. And uh, one thing here that's nice is you can enable the uh, GPIO option for uh, just a straight IR uh, device attached to the GPIO headers. I have ordered my device from China and will wait a couple of weeks for it to show up at my door. And when it does, I'm going to make a video about how you go about uh, connecting a, uh, you know, a $2 part to your Raspberry Pi so that you can have a built-in IR receiver. Pretty cool stuff. Other than that, uh, XPMC functions exactly the same way that it would on an HTPC, an Apple TV, or uh, even on a desktop computer. It's uh, perfectly capable of running uh, off of a MySQL configuration. I've had it set up uh, and connected to my uh, in-house MySQL configuration, and I, uh, it, it works just fine. The nice thing about the latest photo version of XPMC is that there's a local copy of all of the thumbnails so the Raspberry Pi or whatever client device is using it doesn't have to go out to the network every time it wants to pull up a thumbnail or a banner or some fan art. And that makes uh, overall performance much, much better. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the final release of uh, RASPMC. And uh, in my opinion, the RASPMC, Raspberry Pi Media Center, is getting very close to a usable product. In fact, right now I would say uh, if you have a nice case on it and you can fit it into your media center, that this is not quite as good, but it's very usable uh, compared to an Apple TV or an Apple TV 2. 
So this is Mark. This has been the uh, very quick review of release candidate number three for RASP-BMC. This is Mark with Quick Venture. Thanks for watching.